Hey everyone, Darren here. Welcome to another Density Insights episode. This is a second part of a two-part episode with Anthony, which is about the data center sector. If you want to learn how to conduct market research better, we strongly suggest you to check out his first episode. Let's get back to the show. While more corporates has gradually digitized their organizations and process, the demand for data center has accelerated like never before. Smart technology and IoT will be increasing driving the demand for high data usage. So Anthony and his team at Colliers have analyzed various pathways to gain traction in this area, including industrial conversion, redevelopment, and direct acquisition of data center properties. After watching the show, please let us know what you think of the episode in the comment section. Thank you. So Anthony, welcome back again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's good to talk to you again, really. <laughs> I mean, like we're doing two shows and stuff like that. But then, so, so previously, we've done a show just now about the, mm -hmm. the research, how for, for the audience who might be, would be uh, interested in learning how to do better research on locally or, or overseas investments. And mm -hmm. then would you mind telling the audience who just jumped in without that context before about yourself and then the episode before that, like what's that about? So yeah, hey guys, everyone, uh, if you haven't checked out a video with uh, Darren, please do check it out again. Um, we talked about um, how to invest real estate uh, proactively and depthly. Um, so I'm, once again, I'll introduce myself. I'm Anthony Wong. I'm currently a research manager at Colliers International. Um, I have an education background in real estate, a postgraduate degree, and I've worked experience in uh, Greater China, US, and now in Hong Kong. And I'm happy to talk, uh, give a little humble opinion about data center because this uh, this topic is really changing by the day. So um, really um, can give out whatever I can take and whatever I can get and give my research real estate research perspective on this uh, topic and I'll be pleasure to talk more about it. Yeah, and for the audience that didn't check out the, the research episode with you, please check it out because I think it's a very good way to kind of understand what it takes to learn about different assets and how, like, in terms of like how to do research and everything like that. And then we've decided to do a data center episode because it's something that I mentioned in the previous episode that a lot of my friends are looking into. It's a very, very hot topic. It's very exciting. So I'm just very happy that you're able to be here and share with us. So. You know, so let's, let's kickstart right away. Why is data center segment become such a hot topic recently? Yeah, I mean, data center has become a hot topic, not just in APAC, but globally. You know, uh, I think it's because of the global uh, uh, sort of awareness that um, in the future, um, AI and technology and the data usage is going to be a huge demand. And on top of that, starting even a couple of years back, data centers are, is already um, kind of a, like a growing kind of real estate sectors and technology sector uh, in, in APAC region. Um, this year with the COVID-19, uh, lots of people are staying home and they're starting to be aware of the, the demand side of, um, you know, what are the technology they can make use and make leverage of when being at home, working from home, either to entertainment or working. Um, and also work from home, uh, these technology, how are they shaping uh, their lifestyle, right? So um, from the management side um, of these data centers um, and from the reinvestment side, it's really changing by the day. So it's really complex um, kind of topic and something real estate um, practi to practitioners, a lot of them themselves are getting themselves adjusted to, to this, um, this sector. And as you know, TikTok just purchased a... Uh, European data center in Ireland yesterday. I mean, they're going through a lot of US complications, but they're still investing quite a lot. So, um, and, you know, increasing cloud services, 5G implementation, a um, lot of, uh, lot of um, companies and a lot of countries and regions are heavily dependent on this technology and will be for a lot of emerging economies. Um, according to some of the uh, market projections, APAC will have about 13.5 billion network devices connections by 2023, and up from 8.6 billion in 2018. So that's 5 billion uh, of change. Um, and also the number of internet users will grow from 2018, 2.1 billion to 3.1 billion in 2023. So uh, the amount of data that's related to uh, that real estate sector is, is quite large. Something that 
uh, real estate pr practitioners will have to get into uh, in the future. Yeah, I mean, like when I was like, I think uh, three, four years ago, and then I think I've looked into it because of a friend of mine that was considering that, hey, you know, should I look in a data center? Do I, should I convert my building into mm -hmm. data center usage? Which is coming in the next second too, right? What are the requirements what, to convert a, a building to a data center usage in Hong Kong? Like in terms of like maybe floor loading, fire regulation and cooling. And same time as that, mm -hmm. how many potential buildings can there be in Hong Kong that can convert it? And lastly is that, you know, always most important thing as an investor is that what is the typical cost per square foot to be, to be converted? Well, um, those are great questions, but uh, I can't comment too much on the prices because it's it's far fluctuating on different regions. So uh, even if I give an average price, it might not reflect the overall data center market. Uh, with the new bidding prices, Shark Team just purchased uh, somewhere around, uh, I would say, four billion uh, Hong Kong dollars for for a site in in Shark Team uh, for a data center site. So to answer your question really simply, there's uh, three ways for uh, data center. Um, real estate usage. One is a uh, wholesale conversion. Another is land acquisition. Uh, then the last is uh, lease modification. Um, I think the easiest pathway was, would be a, a wholesale conversion, which is um, pretty simply really the change in the use of parts of its existing building. So for example, you have a industrial unit already how do you convert it uh, with the existing, um, for example, power lines that is necessitated into the unit? And what are the, the location that's not affecting the adjacent um, uh, surrounding uses? And so for wholesale conversion, there's usually no fee uh, for waiving any conditions for the change of use. The data center takes place in the existing building, uh, which is typically according to the lands department and the government regulations has to be 15 years or older. And the proposed building has to be zoning, uh, industrial, commercial, and OU, so other, uh, uh, other specified uses, business, uh, and on qu quotation. Um, so this is the easiest way in terms of cost-wise. So if you're able to convert into data center, good for you. You know, like you can probably change it. And if you are in Trunk Well, which is there's a lot of trunk lines, power lines supporting that, that location, then there's a high probability of going through that wholesale conversion. Um, another thing is land acquisition, uh, which is a, a government land that's issued for sale uh, for a data center. And that is usually uh, issued out in the lands department. And um, so it's usually a government site from a land sale program um, spe uh, stipulating what type of uses and data centers uh, that, that um, what type of uses um, that can the investors or the buyers are able to purchase. And it really depends what uh, what location it is and where uh, where it is too. And the last one is lease modification, um, as redevelopment. So, got, for example, you've got old industrial building in uh, Kuai Ting, uh, for example, which is really hot for data centers right now. Um, how do you redevelop into higher data centers? Um, there is also regulations. Um, so, for example, uh, the data center portion of the redevelopment should be at least uh, 40 percent um, assessed based on uh, the, 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 the overall GFA and another um, kind of uh, consideration is that the redevelopment has to take place on industrial lot so really you have to look through the uh, town planning guidelines the outline zoning plans look at the uh, land lease and see what the specifications and as investor, uh, most of all, you need to consider land premium, and that is subjected based on um, your location and what type of data center you're issuing, and what type of company are you overseas company, or local company, um, and how long uh, are you proposing this development site for? So these are typically the three uh, pathways to go about on data centers development. I see. I assume that the electrical power grid would affect the potential probability of it. Mm -hmm. Is there any difference between, for example, the Hong Kong Island side and Kowloon side? And if so, is mm -hmm. there any preference to do companies normally do both or one of them? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm not an electrician, so I can't comment on the specifications. Mm -hmm. I'm a research. Uh, I, I, you know, I've read a lot uh, about. Um, the macro side of uh, data center, but digging down to the technicality uh, is really uh, 
a really complicated topic, which requires uh, people with a substantial engineering background. So I'll give you my two cents on it. Um, I would say um, really in Hong Kong, uh, really broadly, these principles is having a reliable power supply. So for example, 99% reliability is really, really high. So specification, you can also look up into uh, the guidelines from Hong Kong government website. And also the Hong Kong, uh, low electricity cost is really what, what is attracting um, a lot of investors coming into Hong Kong, developing data centers, because um, the fact that Hong Kong is not only reliable, but these data centers are requiring huge amount of electricity usages um, on a daily basis. So you need to find locations that could support that. For example, you have to uh, have a development that is on the trunk line or the electricity line or power station that is able to support uh, the data center development. And having a lot of network con connectivity. Um, and Hong Kong is a good place because its uh, climate is relatively stable. So you don't have tight really substantial kind of uh, typhoons that could tore down these electrical lines or buildings. Um, though there is still risk out there, but um, we also don't have the risk of earthquakes, such as Japan, such as uh, in some parts of Taiwan and places like that. Um, so I think another thing uh, of Hong Kong really that we talked about and the Hong Kong uh, data center landscape is data protection, which is a lot of people are concerning um, because the personal uh, data ordinance, which is issued by the Hong Kong government protects uh, personal data. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding it because of the uh, new NSL that, that's coming in. But, um, you know, this is still a really, really attractive because of whether whatever happens, data is always going to be important, especially in a populated area like South China, Hong Kong, Greater Bay Area. So I think, um, it's definitely, uh, in terms of geographical region-wise, um, currently, uh, I think Chun Kuan O has a, has a really good kind of foundation for um, data, centers, data centers because of its strong existing infrastructure. But you can look at emerging locations like Lok Ma Zhou, to Moon that are actually having um, a gain of traction in terms of uh, infrastructure building, in terms of catering these data centers. So um, these will uh, progressively issued out by the government in terms of when um, these infrastructure could be built. I see. That's very informative, by the way. Thank you so much mm -hmm. because you cover like a lot of ground of what's most important about data center and why it's there, why mm -hmm. it's there. So you know, mm -hmm. like. Because like uh, we we've talked about this before, you know, Singapore and Guangzhou are very popular right now with data center mm -hmm. type of assets, right? Uh, mm -hmm. What's the overall landscape in Asia, and how is Hong Kong positioned? And then same time is that who are the major players globally in the in the region? Yeah, for sure. I think um, to answer um, the global players first, um, you have. Equinox uh, Global Switch, these are really, really large uh, global companies. In Hong Kong, uh, you have Sunny Vision, which is uh, owned by um, Sun Hong Kai, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, this uh, Sunny Vision is a big data center um, uh, 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 operator that kind of supports a lot of uh, high tech IoT stuff in Hong Kong. So these are the local market players. You have Grand Ming as well, which is also a local, uh, semi local market player. Um, Hong Kong is well positioned geographically because it's close to China. And China requires a lot of, uh, for example, international, uh, international data uh, transporting hub and Hong Kong can act as an intermediary, just like a financial hub, because data in the future is gonna be worth a lot of money as well. So Hong Kong is geographically advantageous, um, but yes, it is competing with Singapore, as you talked about. Um, Singapore is the gateway to Southeast Asia and it has similar advantages, uh, robust data privacy regulation, arguably stronger than Hong Kong, but Hong Kong does have that geographical uh, advantage. Um, Singapore, in some way, does edge Hong Kong a little bit in terms of the internet speed. Uh, it's because they have uh, existing a little more robust infrastructure. Um, and also, Singapore has more um, sort of lenient uh, land supply towards the sector. So they're, they're more willing for, for the market players to, to bring in more investment uh, because they, they're over, uh, giving a lot of land. Uh, I think the shortage of land supply in Hong Kong is going to be a problem, uh, has been a problem in the past. But Hong Kong government and various other uh, consulting agencies are foreseeing 
uh, a, re, uh, a new document issuing, uh, if you have heard about in the policy address uh, budget report this year, the industrial revaluation to uh, 2.0, that is going to be a, a positive factor in terms of issuing more land for industrial and high tech and for these startups to prosper. Um, so, yes, we are in a, in, a, in a tricky platform, but I think um, once these kind of uh, conflicts such as U.S. trade war, um, uh, 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 COVID and everything kind of uh, settles down. I think Hong Kong would, would emerge even stronger because of its geographical location and an existing uh, strong infrastructure. As we mentioned about the electricity supply, um, the the the, the, uh, the the amount of um, human capital that can support this kind of industry. <laughs> I see. I, 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 that's kind of interesting. Thinking about mm -hmm. a grand scheme of thing like. The geographic location, not only financial, it seems like even for the data side, the industrial side, yeah. it still have a benefit of it, right? And then yeah. I, th I was planning to ask you more about the Guangzhou and the Hong Kong relationship in terms of mm -hmm. the data center side. But do you, would you mind to have some opinion on that? Uh, so Guangzhou and Hong Kong, yeah, for sure. So mm -hmm. Hong Kong currently um, in the north of Hong Kong, if you go through the border uh, between um, Hong Kong and Shenzhen, there's a place called uh, Lok Ma Zhou, right? So mm -hmm. Lok Ma Zhou is close to Hong Kong and mainland China border, uh, which is desirable for tech companies just across the border, like Tencent, Baidu, Huawei, a DJI, which is a drone company. Mm -hmm. um, so there's currently proposed 87 hectare of Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation and Technology Park in Lok Ma Zhou. Uh, specifically catered towards R&D and technology and startup incubators. So this kind of development will likely kind of um, push even greater uh, demand for data centers because of technology uh, companies um, that is able to leverage upon Hong Kong because Tencent. We still ha don't have uh, really popular usage of Alipay and, and, and WeChat Pay in Hong Kong. We're still relying on uh, the HSBC Pay Me, right? So when I was work uh, when I was working in China, like all these kind of financial data, uh, financial uh, payment platforms, no one, almost no one uses cash anymore. If you even go to rural areas, everyone accepts WeChat Pay. So you can tell how much of that financial data is, is, is really valuable and how much in relation back to data centers, how much of that is indeed in need. Another, uh, I would say, another place in Hong Kong, not bordering, uh, not uh, uh, not bordering uh, China, is Tun Moon. Uh, it is a really strategic location uh, with the link between Chaklap Kok and Tun Moon that is supposed to be completed in 2020. Um, this will create a lot of long-term development opportunities, um, giving a lot more um, opportunities, long-term growth uh, because it is close to the airport, which is a uh, international airport. So. Anywhere of these transportation hubs, like borders and, and places with strong trunk lines and kind of like safe uh, places that is able for, in terms of a geographically safe, stable climate wise, is, is a good place for um, a data center. And Hong Kong uh, is at the right place of um, having that uh, geographical and infrastructure advantage. I see. So, so what a typical yield and on data center compared to traditional industry uh, industrial building, and how long the lease contract and operators typical for? Lastly, what's the trend overall in the demand for data center in, in th those regard? And do you think that next five to ten years, like it's going to be good? Like, what, what do you think of that? Yeah. So, the yield of the data centers it's about. Um, Traditionally, it's been about 3.5%. Uh, it's approaching 4% because the rents are really leveraging itself, um, which is, the yield is actually higher than uh, grade eight offices in Hong Kong, which is about a high 2%. Um, so it makes it an attractive investment uh, because you can have greater returns and typically more stable yields um, because uh, usually um, these contracts, these data centers, uh, the leases range from eight to 10 years or more because you have really expensive uh, equipment uh, being shipped into the, these sites, right? So uh, these racks and usually these leases are longer because you want to protect these equipment uh, longer and able to operate longer in a specific location if you move uh, to a different location and there might be a, a lot of problem as well so usually typical uh, tenants like to stay in the, in, in, in the data center longer so that creates more of a stable yield not just high yield stable but high yield and rents have been progressively going up for example this year year on year has already gone up five to ten percent and depending on which region right so uh, it is exciting 
Um, to answer your uh, where is the uh, demand and where is the future trend going, um, uh, there's a lot of trend that is that is being propelled in the sector. And when you look at the uh, COVID induced uh, remote office solutions and cloud computing, uh, a lot of companies are willing uh, for the employee to work from home or on a rotational basis. I think Hong Kong. Um, uh, it's not going to be uh, work from home is not going to be as as impacted. Um, for example, that notion is not going to be impacted. For example, places like San Francisco, which is tech, and a, uh, in some places you got to drive an hour to your office. In Hong Kong, transportation is still really convenient. So, uh, remote um, solutions and other areas that are, are more uh, 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 requires more uh, working uh, transporting time will be really really useful. Um, as, as we talked about, um, the, the MNC corporates and these high tech companies will obviously be, be at the uh, uh, forefront of driving this uh, data center use because of their data, uh, data demand. Another thing is um, online and retail e-commerce that's been going on in uh, five five to 20, uh, 20 years almost uh, ever since Amazon came in. And uh, I think consumer demand is increasing and shifting towards online shopping. And retailers should invest in online shopping platforms and enhancing, for example, different kind of distribution uh, strategies. Um, and these kind of uh, online shopping requires a lot of uh, data use as well. And Data Center creates a really kind of roadmap for these uh, different uh, online shops can as an intermediary to, to give information for consumers and the, the owners himself. And last but most, um, I think data center, it is emerging, but even further uh, than that, um, it, there has to be more uh, of a green and sustainable uh, data center development uh, coming into play. Um, as you uh, know, data center, as we talked about previously, data centers is really energy intensive. Um, uh, it provides a lot of power and it consumes a lot of energy. So uh, operators, um, the larger operators, actually right now, like international operators like uh, Equinox, uh, Equinix has actually adopted renewable practice by using a lot of their electricity supply um, from renewable energies like solar power, wind power. Um, they actually committed and a lot of companies will be following that, especially with the ESG and the post-COVID trend. Um, of environmental awareness. Um, these companies are actually trying to achieve that 100% efficiency in terms of the renewable energy. So, um, and you, on top of that, you have a really, really great policy platform uh, such as the UN 2030 uh, Sustainable Agenda, uh, ESG guidelines, as we talked about, which will even push these companies to go for renewable energy that is sustaining data centers. So, um, I see this as, 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 a, as a future pathway on how uh, data center is developed. That's very, very good. I think that's a very good way to summarize too. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I think we can, there are so many questions pop in my head right away, yeah. but I'll leave it for asking you on your profile and the density profile and everything and more and more. And then, so for yeah. people who might be, might be want to know more about, you know, this segment and the previous episode, the research and so on, what are a couple of ways that people can find you know more about you and your work? Yeah, for sure. So we have published a uh, data center report uh, in April. So even go on Google and type in data center, uh, future landscape data center specifically, and you type it in and type in colors international. We actually did a 14 page report specifically analyzing locally based in Hong Kong, where to invest in data center. And we have a strong uh, research and valuation team. If you're more interested and you have investment, uh, 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 kind of uh, thoughts or be, uh, just curious about the sector, feel free to uh, just take a look at the document and reach me out uh, or reach uh, our company, uh, some of the representative. But my email is anthony.wong at colliers.com and make use of those reports and give your perspective on where a data center is moving towards. And we give a lot of insights um, how not only Hong Kong itself, but how our international forces, like when we talked about Singapore, how, how are we competing with our competitors? So, um, yeah, feel free, free to reach me out uh, via my email address or uh, uh, take, a, take a look at our reports. Mm -hmm. That's great. Obviously, as I said before, I'll have everything in the show notes and I'll say thank you so much. It's, thanks for sharing with us. And then actually, even myself personally, I learned a lot through 
you're sharing and then hopefully you can come back around too because like you know just a lot, a lot, <laughs> i think i'm sure like if i come to the next segment let's say in the future maybe retail or office residential anything with big changes you're the one of the first person i'll talk to to see hey you know anthony <laughs> let's come on board in round two again so thanks a lot for your time and effort because you know it's is is something that like you know i care about is that people know more about what's going on in niche market that data center industrial different segment of it too we can cover that in the future so thanks a lot again yeah, for sure. It's my pleasure. Um, you know, this sector is changing quite a lot. So for sure, the next time we chat about it, we're going to see new exciting things coming in. For example, the transaction by TikTok yesterday is quite exciting. So it's a very exciting topic to talk about. And for uh, sure. thanks for having me here. For sure. Yeah, thank no you. For, okay, thank you. Until next time then. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, for sure. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. What do you think of this episode? Please let us know in the comment below and be sure to hit the subscribe button to keep in touch with us for upcoming videos. But before we go, I want to give a big shout out to Patina Design Lab. They're the one who help us in making our brand, our direction, as well as these videos. They are a strategic design consultancy firm to help businesses with a wide range of design services from industrial design, branding, graphic design, art direction, content creation, and many more. They are a very talented bunch, and I urge you to check out their website for their work. That's all for today, and see you next time. Cheers.